you're seeing uh, the small icy bodies in the outer solar system that make up the Kuiper Belt, and Pluto is the king of the Kuiper Belt. And so we're going to learn so much about this third zone of the solar system, and it's really for everyone, for all the people of the world. We're still, we're still, of course, waiting all of the closest approach data. We've been watching, we've been watching with the uh, with the Pepsi instrument and another instrument, the SWAP instrument, solar wind and energetic particle conditions around Pluto for a couple of years now, or in the outer solar system for a couple of years now. And so we've been watching very carefully as we've been getting closer and closer to Pluto. And as was announced the other day, we believe they were maybe seeing uh, seeing uh, ions. That are associated with Pluto's neutral atmosphere. And so, of course, well, we're expecting for most of the signature to actually be coming in from probably within yeah, about like six hours like before closest approach. And that data is not down so yet. So it's going to be a few more days before we actually see all of that data. But we're really expecting to be able to try to put together an incredible story about how the Pluto's atmosphere is boiling off of the planet, is interacting with the solar wind, and perhaps is having a totally different kind of an interaction with the solar wind than any of the other planets in the solar system. It's, it's really sort of the archetype or the, the best example that we're going to be able to have of what all of these other worlds look like. We know that there are at least another, another seven or so large Kuiper Belt objects that are between the sizes of Charon and, uh, and, and Pluto itself. And so this is a good opportunity for us to start understanding what those other objects look like what those other processes have gone on in the outer part of the, of the solar system going back several billions of years. Again, within 7,800 miles, that's no longer the case. Information that we got is to take the data that we're just about to take. There's also the possibility that with some of the some of the instrumentation that's on board with SWAP and with Pepsi and with the dust counter of actually continuing on out and continue taking data in the outer part of the heliosphere in the same way that has been done by the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 and Pioneer 10 and 11 probes and to help to add to our knowledge of, of what that really that the interplanetary space really looks like as we keep going out. So we'll see. I mean, all of this is, of course, contingent upon funding, contingent upon the continued health and safety of the spacecraft. But everything is looking great, and uh, potentially there was enough more power on board to keep the spacecraft working perhaps into the mid-2030s. Shirley Tombaugh. Annette Tombaugh. Al Tombaugh. Kathy Olsen. Will Brady. Ron Bagnall. Kimberly uh, Anderson. And Jeff Moore. Okay, very good. We have 25 seconds, folks. T minus 25 seconds.